we're in the Hakdama of the Rebitzlum of Elashim, the uh, son of Reb Chaim Elashim. And uh, I have to admit that initially I was just going to go through this very quickly, just the Hakdama. But I'm realizing that the Hakdama of Rebitzlum of Elashim is uh, as Chashev as the Savior. I mean, he really he learns Shat from his father. He's learning his father like a sugya, which is all together like what a what a dream. Could you imagine that if we could become so great that our kids will want to learn us? <laughs> Not to say a hespid, you know, like, uh, you know, oh yeah, my dad. I, uh, just really like learn shot. So like he learns shot at today that uh, he didn't, uh, we're going to see later why he didn't, but uh, he didn't print the safer never so high for a number of years. And when he went over it to uh, a you know, number of years after his father was nifter, he went over his own hakdam and then he wrote hagos. Anis Hakdama, like, you know, oh, and another, he has another Kiddush and another Kiddush. And so he was like a Sukhya, like a Sukhya of the Gebar, just an, an amazing. They took every aspect of it and blended it in with Chazal and just, just beautiful. So, what we, with the last thing that we said um, in, your, uh, in our volume here, it's um, on page, we just finished page 19, moving on to page 20. And we said that the the uh, Rukhain Velazhin, he says, um, was his his ikir was that he was he sat in front of the Vilna Gon, Milakame, and he brought here in the in the um, in the footnote on the second time around that when it came to um, let's say Rebbe said what was my greatness, my great and people asked him how Rebbe how did you Rebbe Hudanasi how did you become so great? So he said because he sat behind Rameir. Um, so he was young. He was just a young Talmud in the time when Rameir was the Rosh Hashiva. He sat behind Rameir. He, he wasn't so good to sit in front of him. He only sat behind him. He says, But if I would have sat in front of him, I would be even greater. So um, he explains in a very deep way. I don't want to go to it again because we did. And that that the, the difference, in, there's a whole difference in the part of the of Das, which is called the Das Milo Kamei, the Das Meach Choyrei. There's the, there's, like when you see a silhouette of somebody or you watch somebody from the back so you can see their mice and you can see their external thing. You can see how they're walking, if they're in a hurry, where they're going, if they're determined, if they have a goal. You can see all that from the back. But you, when you see the face of a person, when somebody's coming towards you, you can really see what's on their mind. Not just, not just their, their, the external output, not just the articulation of where they're going, but you actually see the depth of the person. So Rameyer said, everything, sorry, Nussi said, what I'm teaching, everything I'm teaching you is because I sat behind Rameyer. So what he meant to say is not a question of telling him where he sat. I sat here, I sat there. What he was saying was that I, I, I uh, the most I saw was the silhouette of, of uh, Rebbe Meir. If I, if I would have seen him from the front, I would even have a whole different Havana. And he says that the Rukhain Velazhin saw the Vilna Gon from the front. So it's not just that, um, that I, I presume that when we hear a story of the Vilna Gaon, another story, another Gaon, another Sadik, but when you see him from the front, he, he understood what was on the Vilna Gaon's mind. You know, it's, uh, this just shows us, it shows us who the Vilna was, who the, guy, who the Vilna Gaon was. He says here on page 20, Ukiyama Mashalama Lufanov, that during the time that he he learned by the Vilna Gon, remember we said when he was young he learned by the Shagasarya, and uh, then afterwards um, he became a Talmud of the Vilna Gon. First word, Ukiyama Shalama of Lafana Be'ema Be'yura, page 20. Oh, I'm sorry, the one I have. Has Dargas first? That's the first word of Dargas? Ukiyama. Ukiyama. It was like uh, the, the Navi speaks about taking from Nahar Dinor, a uh, Kabbalistic Navi, of, of taking from the rivers of knowledge of Har Dinar, which were, were rivers of fire that uh, Daniel Hanavi describes as Navua. He said that it was, he was watching rivers of fire. Whenever he would teach or tell over to his children, or his students, that's how it was when Reb Chaim Velazhin would describe um, his learning and standing in front of the Vilna Gon. 
Aim Sidurabe Havi Law, he would be in Pachat, he would tremble as he would quote the Vilna Gon, Bimura Nifla, Ki Ulu Oime Lufana Bimara. The Vilna Gon was long gone, he was in Shemayim, but it was as if the Vilna Gon was standing right there in front of him, and he would have this Pachat of, of every time the, the Vilna, every time he would quote the Vilna Gon. Bikashir Posach, Bishmaitse, Vidokar, Shmei Dirabe, whenever he would st- start with learning or even mention the name of his Rebbe, Havi Miratea Kolagufa, he would, he, his whole body would begin to shake. Vizihu Ishnin Iluha, and this is all Lushin from Daniel. Zihu Ishnin Aleha, you know, Zihu, like, like a two dots of hut. Zihu Ishanin Iluha, his whole, he would change. Rechaim Lushin would look different, his face would be different, everything would be different because like the, the Ruach of the Gon was going through him. That's how, that's how um, remarkable this was. May Eisha Misakachas Bilavavo, from the fire of the river, of the Vahagiyo Darech Tarkitzi Kosei Vachasidosei Vataris Kedushosei. Vahar Tairosei Nikmesei, and he had a Kenyan in the Torah of the Vilna Gon, Vahasher Hoya Koycha Yofe Vahamaylo Shatari Nikmesei, because, and this is really the segue to what we want to speak about today, because he was Koycha Yofe, meaning that the Reb Chaim Velazhen, his strength was, the strength of character was was in the, uh, as we call these days, the 48 ways that the Atari Niknesbem, which Atari has acquired to them. And if you look at the theme of those 48 ways, I'm not an expert, but if you look at the theme, much, much of it comes down to being humble, being able to be machnea yourself, being able to do without being able to um, care less about your comfort and more about the material in the Torah and Hashem. The, the, that's the, the, I think, the <coughs> upshot of the, of the 48 way shot Torah and Nikmas Behem. And this was the Tuna of Rechaim Velazhen, and this is what we're going to speak about now. When we have Deres Eliyahu, this is like a pun, and from the mantle of Eliyahu, from the coat of Eliyahu, which is, later on Rechaim Velazhen wrote a sefer about the Vilna Gon, called it Deres Eliyahu, um, he slabish on of the year from being in the presence, um, in the awesome presence of such a great person as the Vilna Gon. I don't think we have a, 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 a concept. My Rebbe used to say all the time, like we have no concept of the Vilna Gon. You know, just we just have no concept in how great of a Talmud as much of a Talmud Chacham that we can imagine. So um, we can't imagine anything. So you multiply it by a thousand. And you get the Vilna Gaon. Uh, that's what he used to say. But th- then he said, and, and it's clear to him, or Scheinberg told me this, he said it to many people, that it's clear to him that the Vilna Gaon was nothing compared to Abaya and Rava. <laughs> and Abaya and Rava compared to Rabbi Udan Nasser. Rabbi Udan Nasser. I mean, it's, it's, we, don't, we don't understand um, the, the. So what's there? They were great geniuses. Of course they were great geniuses. But the point is that the, the, they were. They were Literally, these people were literally walking Sifre Torah. They were Torah. It's not that they learned Torah, that they did Torah. They were Torah. They, they were Torah. And everything was 100% clear to them. It was like Hashem's gift to the world. So it's, we're talking about when, when he would mention the Vilna, the Vilna Gaon, he would, he would tremble. And it, would cre- and it created in him one of the, the or the, perhaps the main theme of the 48 ways, which is Anova, which is modesty, humility, being humble. And here he says, do you have the place? Ugadola Anova, so well. Ugadola Anova, Shokvod Mar Abba Hagoin. And I want to speak now, he says, about the Anova. Now, I think there's a lot of Torah here to be learned. And uh, we say modest, we're used to hearing this word. He was humble. I think there's a lot of Torah to be learned here from the kind of logic. And he slabish behold Rachel and he's This humility took over everything that the Reb Chaim did. And I want to tell over the tip of his knowledge. This is also a pun, because ksas means a little bit, right? But ksais means like minakotza la katza, to the extreme. So do you know the connection between those two words? Because when you get something down to the very, very end, you get to a peak, you get to a final that you're, you're getting down to like one one almost immeasurable point. That's why it's called the ksas. <laughs> ksas is the katsa. So he says, I'm going to give you the tip of the iceberg here. Sois drach of asapra, which is the of a pasuk, 
Asher Derech Hanava Leois Leois. Now this is interesting. Leois es Dacha or Lereimim es Dacha Itay. I don't know if you're familiar. Let's learn it together for a second. The Gemara says in Soita, fascinating Gemara. There's part of this Gemara that everybody knows about why Har Sinai was the uh, not the biggest mountain. Right? There's even kids songs about it. But really, the Gemara is much. Gemara says in Saita Daf Hey. There's a Pasuk in Yeshayahu. Pasuk Yeshayahu says, Ve'esdaka ushfal ruach. Let's go all the way and learn the Pasuk. Yeshayahu and a Nevoah. They have the most fantastic Nevoahs. <laughs> Yeshayahu. Ki Mar. This is what Hashem said. This is, by the way, Yeshayahu and Zion, a little piece of trivia which is not trivial. This is the only place in the whole Tanakh where a Navi says Ki Mar and he doesn't say Ki Mar Hashem. Always says Ki Mar Hashem, including Yeshayahu. Koyamar Hashem. This is what Hashem said. Ki Koyamar. This is very deep. He just says Koyamar. This is what he said. He said Koyamar Hashem. But what does he say instead? He gives adjectives. Koyamar Ram Venisa Shoichenad Vikadoi Shemai Maroim Vikadoi Eshkain. Koyamar, the most exalted one. When we say this on Shabbos, Shoichenad Maroim Vikadoi Shemai, right? But this comes from these Psukim in Yeshayahu where Shochinad Marom, we speak about God as the exalted one. Where is God? He, he can't get higher. He can't get more um, in, into, into, a, into a more lofty place. Shochinad, you can't be more forever. Marom, the Kadosh, completely separate Shema. That's HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So when we talk about the ad- adjectives of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're talking about the highest of the high. Impossible to get higher. So Yeshayo says, Ki Chayamar Ram Menisa Shoichen Ad V'Kadosh Shemai Marim V'Kadosh Eshkai. Where do I live? Says Hashem, Marim in the highest place V'Kadosh Eshkai. So He's out there. God is not for us. In, 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 to put this in our terms, Hakadosh um, Baruch Hu is not anything or anyone that we can that we can um, grasp in any way. And then Yeshayo says. Ki Koyamar in the name of Hashem. Koyamar Ram Venisa Shaykhanad Bakadur Shabai. He's quoting God here. I am the highest, I am the holiest, I am the furthest away, the most ungraspable of anything that you can imagine. As Daka Ushval Ruach. Lahachya Shruach Shvalim. My purpose is as Daka Ushval Ruach for the downtrodden, for the humble. Lahachya Shruach Shifalim. I will give chius to the ruach, to the downtrodden spirit of those that are of the lowly. Ula hachayos, and it will be a machaya. I'll give chius, I'll give life, lev nitkayim, to those that are despondent. So um, here's Yeshayo who describes the, uh, the, the ultimate dichotomy, really, of life. Think about it for a second. That here's Hashem, who's the highest of the high and the most exalted, and the most unreachable and ungraspable of anything in life, even beyond life, there's nothing, HaKadosh Baruch, we're talking about Hashem. And what's he busy with, says Yeshayo? This Ko Amar, this is what this Ramanisa says, that I'm here for the despondent one. I'm going to take, or we say in Davening, Motzi Asir, Odan Novim, Ozidalem, Ona La'amo Yisrael Be'Shavim. So, so the, the high and the low, what's, what's the omic of it? What's the omic of this? And I think there's a big omic. So the Gemara says, first of all, in Sota, the Gemara says, quotes this passage, Mezdaka Ushval Ruach. How do you translate the word Ve'es Daka? 
It's a little bit awkward when you read the Pusik. Give it to you one more time. Yes. Yes, in the Yitan. Hikoya Maram Venisa Shoichinad Kodoy Shmoy Maram Kodoy Shashkain Ves Daka Ushval Ruach. So, how do you translate that? Chaim, what's Ves Daka Ushval Ruach? And also involved. And also? Which word is also? Ves. Ves. Ves Daka Ushval Ruach Lahach Yais Ruach Shifal. So, Chazal, I want, we're worried about what's that Ves exactly? Vedaka. What's the, what's the ass? Not just the the, the Gemara about Esla Rabbis. Uh, with, 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 yeah. With, and, and what's the ramification? And what's the ramification of with? Connected. <laughs> He's the meaning. He down. is down here. So it says the Gemara like this: The es daka ushva ruach. The Amoraim how they learn Torah, how they learn to pasuk that we just sing. Vezdako Shva Ruach Rav Huna Rav Chista. This was a machoikis Rav Huna and Rav Chista. Chad Omar Rav Huna held. What's the pshat? Ve'es Daka Iti Daka. Chad Omar and Rav Chista said no. Ani Es Daka. Sounds subtle. The machoikis. What what's the pshat in this S? So Rav Huna said. Ani es daka. And Rav Chista said, I'm sorry, iti daka. And then Rav Chista said, Ani es daka. <clears throat> so Rashi helps us here. What is the, the, the first opinion is iti daka. Hashem's talking. With me are the downtrodden. Sounds good, no? With me are the downtrodden. What more can we ask for? So it says Rashi, what does that mean? Ani magbiya. Es hadako. I will pick up the downtrodden. Ad sheshoichen etzli until that downtrodden person is with me. Behind eshkoin es daka. And that's what Yeshayahu meant, that he, the exalted one, will pick up the downtrodden, magbiya shefalim, and bring him to me. Comes your chista, and he says, no. I don't like that. He didn't mean et daka. He meant ani es daka. Says Rashi, ani marchin es chinasi etzloi. I will come down to him. What a machlekes! Machlekes Rav Huna and Rav Chista when Hakadosh Baruch Hu helps the downtrodden. Kul alma. Hakadosh Baruch Hu helps the lowly person. Now, who's not all of us? That's all of us. That's all. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu helps the downtrodden. Is it the pshat? That Hakadosh Baruch Hu takes the downtrodden and picks him up to where he is, or is it the pshat that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is marking as atzmai, marking as atzmai? He lowers himself, pours himself into the place of the low person, and imcha anoichi b'tzar. I'm with you. Everybody hear the shaila. Is that esoteric or my naf me that? What is the shoichin ad maroi? My naf me that? What's that? We go, we, he brings us up, we go down. He still has to bring them back up on the way, no? Why? Because what's the point of going down there if it's not lifting them? I mean, even if it's just the experience of him being with us down here, it, it's doing something. So it's lifting us back up, right? Okay, so you're, you're, you're. You're Lavdafka. I mean, that's what you're assuming. Mm-hmm. But let's let's clear our minds here for a second. Is it is that necessary? What what is happening here? So I, I'll tell you just my own idea that the the pshat in this gemara is, by the way, that the end of the gemara. What's the, what's the what's the halacha? <laughs> what's the halacha? You can't have a shaila of Huna and Rav Chista with no nafkamina. They weren't just uh, you know two guys having a <laughs> having a you know philosophical debate. Oh, more something like that. So says the Gemara. Mistavra commando Omar. The Gemara later on says, "It's already time for Ravina and Ravashi after Ravuna and Ravchista." Mistavra commando Omar ani es daka. It's more likely, it's more logical to say that Hashem comes down to us, not that He brings us up to Him. Why? Shorei Kodesh Baruch Hu Inia Kol Haramu Gvois. 
Because you see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not give the Torah on Mount Everest. HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not take, as Rashi says, Har Sinai, and he could have done anything, right? Make it grow. Wow, what a miracle. Just like there's there's thunder and there's lightning and there's clouds and you're listening to the to the lightning and you're, and you're seeing the thunder and like all kinds of weird things happening at Har Sinai. So one more thing could have been, woo, watch that mountain grow. <laughs> the mountain could have gone up to Shemaim. That would have been a cool nest and that would have been Judaism. It sounds like, it sounds a little, what? It was a mountain. It was a mountain. It wasn't a low place. It wasn't a low place, and it wasn't the, the smallest mountain even, but it wasn't the biggest mountain. So, But he could have made it into the biggest mountain. Even if you say Harsinai had a, a mile on to itself, says the Gemara, um, like Gavar Harsinai Lamala. He didn't pick Harsinai, not like everybody says, he didn't pick a higher mountain. Like Gavar Harsinai Lamala, he didn't pick Harsinai up. So from here you see that what? That Daf Gashem wanted to come visit down here. He's a, like a great person. So I, you know, I want an audience with the king. I want an audience with the prime minister. Okay, who's going to who? <laughs> Obviously, we're going to go to the office of the right, right. The, the president, the prime minister, the king is not coming to me. So here's Hakadosh Baruch Hu saying that it could go this way, it could go that way. Enough that he's giving us this audience and he's taking care of the downtrodden. But no, I'm going to go to him, Mustafa. And we see what's the Mustafa? We see it from Har Sinai that Akharish Baruch Hu went down to the mountain. He didn't bring the mountain to him. If you pick us up, it sounds like there's a chesaron in Main Daka that he had to pick us up. If he's coming down to us, so that's already. The what's same. the chesaron? That he had to pick us up. But if he's coming down to us, could be that that's Rasta, that that's Taka okay to be Daka. And then you get a Shemuji. As opposed to, I need to pick you up and fix the problem. There's something, there's type, something so condescending. Right. Condescending. I'll bring you up to me. And here he says further that not only did he not pick our Sinai up, but he niach kol harim ugvois. He he left aside all the harim, all the gvois, all the big mountains. Vehishra shchinasay al har Sinai. Also, vehi niach kol ilanois tayvois. Right? Imagine Moshe Rabbeinu should have had his great first nevua. With, with an elm tree, <laughs> something majestic. Uh, it's a bush. <laughs> something, yeah. Yeah. Came to, us, came to Moshe Rabbeinu in a snap. The, the, the taiches, the dati, say, the gadol, that there's two ways of looking at at world, at, at life, the Jewish way and the non-Jewish way. Assuming that everybody agrees that God created the world and we're here to serve Him, is the world something where, like like, like we have this world and we have to somehow get out of it, and go to go to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, like let's just get out of this mess and and put our heads in, in the Shemayim, <clears throat> or is it the pshat that Hashem created this world for a reason? And, and being that the world was created for a reason, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to be He wants a dira b'tachtoin. That's this week's parsha, right? Truma, Tetzava. This is what it's all about. I, I don't, I, we're not talking about you coming to me. I'm coming to you. Why? Because this is the whole tikkun. The, 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 when, when Hashem created the world, it's kol, kol Hashem mishalech bagan. Rish Baruch Hu was with us in Gan Eden. Lamato, Lamato, Me'asar Tzvachim, like we looked over and over again, the Gemara in, in, in the Tzvachim Tzvachim. Lamato, Me'asar Tzvachim. It was only when Adam, Arishain, and Chava did the Chet that Rish Baruch Hu said, I, I can't coexist in a situation where you don't recognize me, where you have no room for me. We need to explain that. So I so I had to I had to elevate myself from above the world, but that's not the ideal. When we understand what Adam Arishan did, it was only the chet. The chet was he took the shechina of Hakadosh Baruch Hu and he raised it from lamata me'asar tzvachim to lamala me'asar tzvachim. He took it out of this out of our domain. Lamata me'asar tzvachim in Hilchas Shabbos is our domain. After that's 
Malcolm Couture. It's like no man's land up there, airspace. <laughs> so, so what we're talking about over here with the Chet of Adam is that this was, he, he went against the very purpose of the world. The purpose of the world was that Hashem should be here in the world. That's where he wants to be. That's where he created the world. I've explained this many times. This is Malchus. Yosef Hayyab Mitzrayim. Yosef Hayyab Mitzrayim. Did I say that? Yosef Hayyab Mitzrayim. What's the, what is Malchus if I don't, ain't Melech B'loyam? What is the Malchus of Hashem if I don't, if I'm only in Shemayim? I need to be the king, Kibyachal, of everything. Everything means the low of the low. And my, my majesty has to permeate everywhere. And Hashem is halich bagan. I have to be in the Gan. So when we talk about HaKadosh Baruch Hu being, picking Har Sinai, so we're not just saying that, well, was he humble. We're, we're, we're saying that th this is the whole point. It's not about humble. It's about, you know, what if I would go to, um, you know, somebody, I just thought got the muscle. Somebody was describing to me, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, that, um, that he, he's going to medical school, Israeli. He's going to medical school. I said, okay, and then what, what do you want to specialize in? So, you know, I'm an American. So Americans are used to, like, I'm going to become a pediatrician. I'm going to become a surgeon. I'm going to become, a, you know, some kind of a doctor. I'm going to become a professor, he says. <laughs> so, um, and then what? I'm going to teach other people medicine, and then what? And they're going to become professors. Well, who's going to heal the people? <laughs> like, like it's it's um, there's this um, idea of living in a uh, uh, this ivory tower, of you know what what does it come? You know, I, I just um, so so it, it reminded me. I, I just to further my muscle, it reminded me. I remember, I was I was at the time learning in Brisk, and I was offered a job in Buffalo, New York. Well, Brisk to Buffalo, B2B. <laughs> so, so, like, what, what's the, like, how, how, how is this going to work, you know? So everyone said to me, like, you're going to go to Buffalo, like, you know, there's, there's like, you know, 90% intermarriage, it's snowing too much, it's, uh, you know, uh, nobody, there's not, there's, there's not a million, you know, I came, to, I came to my new shul, the Rav of a shul, the Rav of a shul, you know, and the first week, there's no million. <laughs> like, how does that feel? So, uh, so I'll describe to you how I feel. It was, uh, it was extremely humbling because I figured I'm going to become the rub of a city, something like Ruby Kivager, like, you know, something, something like the Hassam Cipher. No minion, okay? <laughs> no minion. But uh, it, it was uh, so you know. So so I remember saying to him in my countenance at the time, as he says, he says, "How are you going to go? Like you know, after all this Torah you learned, and you're here, you're Shalayim." Or Scheinberg and Brisk, you're gonna to go to Buffalo. Like what's that? So I said that's like that sounds to me like um, somebody who spends years and years in university and, and, and education learning how to treat uh, malaria, and then somebody says, okay, shlichut, time to go to Africa, um, and he said, Africa, I'm not gonna go there. There's malaria over there. So <laughs> like, 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 like what that is the point, you know? So so we're so, so you know, you know, just tell you a quick story, which I, I may have told, but just uh, just a quick story like that. I got while while I'm here that uh, you know there there was no minion, and I, I remember like it was the minion was called for nine, I think, or nine thirty or something like that. That's what they called it for. No, no minion. Uh, three people, four people, five people. Another one walks in. Another one drives in. Another one, <laughs> like you know, and we get to nine. And, and it's maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. We get to nine people. Like the, the only thing worse than having uh, two people is having nine people. <laughs> like, what's a, like and, you know, hello, we got the shchida. Like, how could this be? I was so, it was terrible. It was just a terrible, terrible feeling. And uh, this was this was not in the, where I was. I ended up in Buffalo, the suburbs. So I, I said to the people, is there another Jew here we can call? No. No potential for a co congregation here. No. <laughs> so what you bring me here for? I don't know. Like you know, uh, no right. You know, like what's the? Uh, there, there's got to be somebody here that we could call. So finally, they, they get to the point that there's there's Goldstein who lives uh, uh, about a block away. Guy Goldstein. He's not a religious guy, but he's he lives about a block away. So okay, Goldstein. So uh, a desperate for a new <coughs> rabbi uh, just came to the city. 
Uh, most of the people were already sleeping in the shoal. <laughs> so I go out to Goldstein's house and I knock on the door. It's 10 o'clock or 10.30 or something like that job this morning and there's no answer. And uh, I, I'm looking in there, they have like a porch, and then the porch is a picture window, you can see it's in the living room, but I'm knocking, knocking. And I go over to the window and I couldn't see anything, but this, uh, uh, I, was never, I never saw this before, was this sort of like uh, white glow in the house. I realized that it was the television, you know. So, so what happened was when I, uh, there was, um, I, I took it closer, there was like a couch and a couch and a television, it was a Saturday morning. And they, they, it looked like something from a science fiction movie. They were all like sitting in front of the television in their pajamas, mesmerized. <laughs> it was like with this glow on their face from the, from the TV, you know. And I'm, and I'm thinking, okay. And I was my talus in the snow. It was December or something. Uh, I, I was my talus in the snow. So I knock on the window and, uh, and I woke them up out of their stupor. And uh, this guy answers with his pajamas, yeah. So I said, uh, you know, we're, I'm, I'm the rabbi here. <laughs> I'm going to wrap my hair. I think back. I would never do this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, people, people in shul, they're waiting. We need a tenth man. He says to me, you know, he, he says, I'm like all confused. He says to me, I'm all confused. That we could be the, is it Rosh Hashanah? What's the like like my 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 be a my like what's the, so, so I said, oh, just like Shabbos that we do a Shabbos. Like, you know, no ideas wasn't even like there was such idea of concept, <coughs> the concept of the chiddush. So he says, "Okay, I'll come. You need me, I'll come. <coughs> I'll come." I came back. I said, "He's coming." Nah, <laughs> I said, no, he's coming. So I look at this guy. I, Ten minutes later, um, you know, Phil Goldstein, he shows up with a suit and a tie and a shirt, like, like Oiska puts that. I don't even know how, you have a mamish, like a shirt. It was like the best dressed guy in the show, he comes in, and here, minion, because of the son, 12 year old son, also all dressed up, beautiful. Um, so I, I just want to tell you something, um, a story. Uh, P.S., uh, P.S., this boy, um, who's today a doctor in Rochester, New York, was the valedictorian at Chavetz Chaim High School. And this guy um, became a rav with smicha and the head of the entire OU of Upper New York State. <laughs> that was neat. So, um, so this is the pshat. Um, you know, you know, think to yourself, like, was Hashem there or wasn't he there? What, what's, what's the pshat? And it was just nifter, uh, maybe, maybe two months ago. This is I'm talking a story of uh, whatever, 40 years or something, 35 years. But, but, but the, this is a shot that the Shechina can be Shoiru. You know, I thought we're waiting for the Shechina. I thought we're waiting for some kind of an esoteric thing to take, take place that we can say Baruch Lois Hashem we were We weren't waiting for that. We were waiting for Phil Goldstein to come because that was the, the, the Hashras Hashechina now came not just to a, a, a snowy city and not just to some suburb and not just to nine people. It came to, a, to, to, the, to the room with the television that's where that's where the permeation of Akadosh Baruch Hu was. So you know, there's malaria there in the woods. But the point is that that that's Gufa, as a, that's the Tikkun. That's the Tikkun because that's where Hashem wants to be. It's not that this is um, humility on Hashem's place. That's why He created the world. That's where He wants to be. And it's not even a question of picking it up. That's where He wants to go. I want to get into that house. I want to get into that living room. I want to permeate. In order, Hashem says, in order for me to be successful with capital my project, then I have to be able to permeate every single nick and cranny of this world. And that's what that's what took place over there. And that was his siyat and, 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 and as I said, the rest the rest is history. So comes the, the Pshat and Harsinai is not that Hashem is making a concession and saying, okay, I'm, I'll meet you on the, on the low mountain because I'm an honor. The, the Pshat and the concession is that that's where I want to be. Now, why wasn't a valley good? We'll talk about it next week. But why why not in a valley? But but that has to do with, as Rabbi Tanyuda said, we have to pick ourselves up. Meaning meaning that there is an Isarusa de la says de la says, I'm coming down to meet you, but you need to come to Shul. I'm coming down to meet you, but you need to build a base of Mikdash. Ba'asuli Mishkan, Mishachanti Basaif. You need to do something in order to make a makam, which is panui, for the shechina. That's what we need to do. But it's, 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 Baruch is happy to go 
not just happy. That is his, that's what he wants. The Ratzon Hashem is to go to the lowest uh, place. So, so here, let, let's take this conversation here. The Gemara says the second example is the snet. So what happens with the snet? Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu stands in front of the snet, and Hashem says, you know, go down to Egypt and speak to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. <laughs> I'm quoting again. <laughs> Let my people go. And what does Moshe Rabbeinu say? Me anoichi ki avelif nefarei. Me anoichi. Who are by? I'm going to go stand in front of Paro. So we all understand the story. You don't have to, you know, who are by to stand in front of Paro. Or else for Simon, I can't even talk straight. I'm going to go speak in front of Paro. And what is Hashem's answer? Before that? I will go with you. I will go with you. I'm not, you, you, you're telling me how low you are. The lower you're telling me you are, the more you're making me happy. It's you could I want. The, the more you're telling me that we're going, that the tribe is a downtrodden place, that they'll never get it. They won't understand Hashem, me Hashem. The more excited I am, Hashem says. Because now I'm going to get into that room with the TV. Now I'm going to get into the most downtrodden trodden place. And if I can't, if I can't soak into the nicks and crannies of the, of this world, which at that time was Mitzrayim, if I can't soak into that, so what, what? What do I need? I need you to get out to top of Mount Everest and meditate. That's why I created a world for you to get out of it. So this is the difference, as I said, between Judaism and every other religion the ones that recognize God, that we're not trying to get away from the world. We're trying to bring Hashem into it. I think that's the Obek of, 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 this, of this Gemara here. The Obek of the Gemara is that comes from Christian and says to Ravuna, no, no, it's not the godless of Hashem is that he brings you up. That's not what Yeshayahu was saying. That Shochenad Maroi Mekadosh Shemai is coming and he's going to come right down. The Shochenad Mekadosh Shemai is right here with us in the pits. Imcha anoichi b'tzara because not because it's because that's where I want to be. See, so, so uh, I will learn with you in time, but we only have two minutes to go. Rav Dessler, Chelad Aleph, page one hundred one. A uh, fascinating mitzvah melio, where he speaks about look at the two greatest revelations in the history of the Jewish people. The two greatest revelations: number one, Ar Sinai; number two, Yecheskel and the Meisim Merkava. The founding of the whole Torah, the founding of the, the, the essence, the only closest we get to the essence of Hashem and Kabbalah is the Maisi Merkava. What Yechezkel saw that we can't even understand. Where did it happen? Not just on a low mountain. It happened, and not just in Golas. But it, 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 you would have thought the whole time we were in Eretz Yisrael, from the time, that, that from the time of, the, of Shlomo HaMelech, all the way until the time of the Harbor, at some point or another, some Navi, would have had a bradavu about the Baisa Merkava. Where was the Baisa Merkava? But it was only, says Rav Dessler, after the Yisurim of Golos, it was only after we were downtrodden, and it was only after we went, we, 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 we were pushed down to the lowest level in suffering that HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, okay, now I could talk to you about the Baisa Merkava. Now you're on some kind of a madrega. Madrega, I've never been so low. Oh, that's that's where I want to be, right? That, that's that's exactly where I want to soak in. I, I, I want to be able to permeate that low place. So it wasn't it wasn't in in in, in the in the time of the base of Mikdash. It wasn't in the time of uh, of of the of the great Navi. It wasn't the time of Yeshayahu or Yirmiyahu. It was Yecheskel. The Golos, Bavel, and Bavel, he didn't even see too strong. Listen to four. Because you got to get lower and lower and lower and lower. Aldar is Bavel. Shab Yoshav, Begam Bochidu. We were sitting by Naris Bavel and suffering and, 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 and hungry and, and mourning the losses that we just lost in Yerushalayim. That, that's where I'm going to appear to you and show you the greatest secret. As Rav Dessler, he brings from the Zayar, I believe, that, that as Rav Dessler, that you, you have to know. That the that the the gilui of the Maisa Merkava 
was a deeper gilui than the Misa of Harsinai. Do I want to repeat that? The, the, the gilui of the Misa of Merkava was a deeper gilui, but I think it's more important. You can live without the Misa of Merkava, you can't live without Harsinai. But in terms of the, 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 the depth of insight, it was even deeper. We got to a deeper place than at Harsinai. Why? Because the, the pain of Golos Bavel was more than the pain of, of, of Mitzrayim. And you see us Mitzrayim. Because you see us Mitzrayim, we're on our way to Eretz Yisrael. We thought within a couple of weeks. Okay, you know, this is, this is, this is, we're just on, we're just en route. Not too bad. Golos Bavel, we thought it was all, we thought it was all over. And, and he says that, and the means to say that we became, in Golos Bavel, we were lower. Since we were lower, we were higher. Is there a ship below uh, Moshe from the river? Oh, what? what? Yeah, a ship below Ra, the first name to Hasuvein, it says here Hasuvein. And it says ship of Saul, that the word Ra Shifcha. Ra Shifcha. That's a different sort of, that's a different thing? Ra Shifcha, like Ab Asher Loira. Yechezkel ben Buzi. So first of all, what's the comparison to Yechezkel ben Buzi? Rakesh or Yechezkel ben Buzi? And why is that Yishayahu? So the answer is that's the highest, and the Shifcha who was lowly, Dafka. The Shifcha was the lowest person. We're not talking about Moshe Rabbeinu. We're not talking about Ari. We're not talking about the Zikta Yisrael. Rosh Shifcha Hayam Bashalai Ra Yechezkel ben Buzi. There was a possibility of even the highest level at the because they because she was so low. Shifcha Hayam. That was the godless of, of, of Shiv Chalaya. So, so what... So that's the title of this puzzle. That's the title. So he says here, just to finish the sentence, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the theme is, that's why I said so much to learn from, from a Hakdama and even a biographical Hakdama. Uh, Hakdama with, with footnotes. Is that... The, the, he, he, he attributed, Rebitzel of Milosian attributed the massive amount of Torah and Siyat to Deshmaya that his father had to start every yeshiva, not from his big heights, but from his, the fact that he was the Un of Mikolotam. See, Ruhaim Milosian writes himself later on in the Sefer. He writes that everybody has to understand that Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't Makabal the Torah in spite of the fact that he, you know, was like a low self-esteem. He, there was, he, he says it was like a, like a clea. It's like a clea, like a cup. And the cup, how much, how much liquid can you fit into this cup? Eight ounces, 12 ounces, 13 ounces. So you can't really measure from the outside of the cup. You have to measure from the inside of the cup. And the thicker the walls of the cup, the like walls, the shvaka cup, right? It doesn't even break when you fall it. The less liquid is going to go in there. Moshe Rabbeinu was the thinnest walls possible. He had hardly, hardly anything of himself. It was clean. He was a clean to be makabel. That was the lowliness. And Ruchai Velazhin mm-hmm. says, he says, everybody has to know that anybody who would be the adav like Moshe Rabbeinu, adav Mikalada, would also have the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. It goes together because, because the adav is making room for the Shechina so that the Shechina can soak in and, and, and be there with Moshe Rabbeinu. So Moshe Rabbeinu thought he was at a disadvantage. I can't talk, I can't put on a power of a shepherd. Mm-hmm. What, 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 no, you're, this is exactly what we want, why, why I'm choosing you. And look at the snap coming to you in a bush. Do you, see, do you see me in the elm trees? This is exactly where I'm coming to you because I want to get back to the place of Kol Hashem B'Shalach B'Gad, B'Toch HaGad. See, let me tell you one thing just to, before, before we uh, say good job is here. I, when I um, just get back to Buffalo for a second, when, when I came from Eretz Yisrael to Buffalo, so uh, Rabbi Rav Shiver told me that I should go, I'm going to stop in New York, I should go say Shalom Aleichem to Rav Moshe Feinstein. Because uh, Roshi Feinstein's and Mitzadik Levrocha is the posekador, and if something will come up, uh, you know, you'll have somebody you can call, and he has to know who you are. And uh, so I said, I'll call you. So he said, I don't know. Always, what's, you know, in America, it's a different country, and I, I just, you know, he doesn't always know, you know, what the minhag is, what to do, what to, you know, you know catch you with remote, he doesn't tell me. So I did, I called, and uh, the rabbit's answered. I told him that, uh, exactly what I, what I wanted. I told her. 
she said, yeah, come, come at this time. And I, I, uh, I came to the house of uh, Ramosha Feinstein on the uh, Lower East Side. I think I might have uh, told you this great story that, uh, that I, I uh, came into the house and uh, she said I should wait in the living room. I should wait in the living room and uh, the beautiful living room. We had a big window look overlooking uh, FDR Drive. And uh, the living room, I'm looking at this living room, it looked like an old person, an old <laughs> rabbi living room, right? <laughs> you know, an old furniture, you know, like my grandmother's furniture, like that's what it was. So we had like this couch with three seats and this um, love seat with two seats. You know, this sort of like royal type of a chair for with one seat you know, with blue coffee table. And that, that was the living room. And I'm thinking to myself, where should I situate myself? <laughs> like, where, where, where do I belong? So I said, like, couch, that's too big. The, uh, the single chair is probably his chair. So I chose the love seat. All right, good choice. So I'm standing in front of the love seat. I'm sitting there. Um, you know, like two seats, but you know those love seats are. You really have to be a lover because there's not really, <laughs> there's really not enough room for two people on those seats. It's just really an expanded one seat, right? Yeah, nobody sits two seats. <laughs> there's two people. You sit on a couch with a pillow in between. It's uncomfortable since I'm close to somebody. So, um, so I'm standing. This I think I thought I chose well. I chose wisely. I chose the uh, thing. And Ramosha comes in, and I stood up, and he says Shalom Aleichem. And uh, he has to choose to see where does he sit? He sits right next to me in the love seat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I felt like telling him, like, there's so many chairs in this room. What are you to sit right next to me? <laughs> and he's had, like next to me like this. He was standing sitting next to me and we're like like uh, two inches away from each other. That's that's the way we're sitting. Straight uh, so um, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> this is like a very uncomfortable. Uh, suit. I mean, like it was like a little too close to the shchita for me. I, 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 uh, any, anyway, so um, what can I do for you? You know, so uh, I explained to him that I just finished yeshiva and uh, I'm probably going to be a rabbi here. And uh, I, I'm looking for you know uh, to make a kasher and uh, maybe some eitzes. You know, uh, in, in rabbonus, like the yeshiva give me an eitzah. So he thought for a second, Ramosha's face was like shining. It was like, I was actually, I, I don't exaggerate, it was actually like difficult to look at him. It was so shiny. It was like, like, uh, like Moshe Rabbeinu, like he needed to wear a mask. And here it was like, I love to see, you know. Uh, but he, he said to me, he said, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an Eitzah. In Yiddish, you were talking. I'll give you an Eitzah. He said that um, traditionally in Rabbanus, there's two ways. To be a rav, one way to be a rav is like you know, Rabbi Yudanasi says, "Nahoidnasi yisecha beramim." You know, ish mechubas, and you don't let anybody offend you, don't let anybody mess with you, don't let anybody. I don't remember his words, but you know, like just make sure, watch your cover, watch your cover. That's one way. And many, many rabbanim were matzliach in that derech. We could go through a list. Uh, and then there's another derech, like you find in history. Of Rabbanim that are mavater, you know. Okay, I covet is not important, and uh, you know whatever, give it to somebody else. It's a different derech in Rabbanus. So he told me, he says, I'm not sure which is the right derech. He says, but I always chose the latter. I was always mavater. You are my etza. I think you should choose the latter too. That was his tip. I thought he's going to give me like some kind of a thing like who to call to be mavater gittin or something, you know, like a, or how to get a minion. <laughs> Be but the 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 omek of of the I don't, I don't know that I you know I was ever on the Badrega to be Makai of it, but it's it's always in my head this 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 eitz. But the, the omek of the eitz is because the whole idea is that you're opening up a new branch for Hakadosh Baruch Hu Shechina. It's a new base of it, it's a new Mishkan, a new place, a new uh, um, and and in order to in order for the the, the the Kol Hashem to be able to permeate the Tochagan, so the only way to do it is by being Mavatar. If, if, like the Rechai Velazhin says, that if, if you have the Kali of Moshe Rabbeinu, you have the Adivas of Moshe Rabbeinu, you can have the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, you can have it because there's room there. So you need to make room. So th this is, I think, the the, uh, the, the message of Yeshayahu. Shoichenan Mara Makanda Shemoy, but he's with you in the love seat. Yeah? He's, 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 right, he's right there and able to permeate if you can be Makabel, if you can be the Kliya Makabel. And this is a very, very practical thing. And, and this Rabitzula says, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll read through it quickly on Sunday, but this is Rabitzula, this is, this is the Rabitzula Velashiach. 
this, this was the success. For this came out Velozhda Yeshivas, for this came out all the Yeshivas, for this came out the Goin HaGoinim, and, and, and where did he get it from? From standing in front of the Gra. His, he, he was together with the Gra, and he saw Mil Fanov, and, and he was humbled in such a way that everything was able to permeate him, the whole Shekhinah was able to permeate him, and he was able to go. So KD Rotsay, this is what we need to open ourselves up to. So to, to be, you want to be big, you have to be very.